Apple invented the game, so what could they possibly learn from the likes of Google? Well, not so fast. Actually, Apple could learn quite a bit. Number one, widgets. Widgets are, what should I say? I mean, I was never a big fan of widgets. I've never been a big fan of widgets, but after really using them and seeing how you have live interactions on your home screen, especially with things like RSS feeds, that's so incredibly handy to have your RSS feeds right there on your home screen. You can just pop it open like that and it updates right there on the fly. So this is an awesome feature and I think iOS could really benefit from widgets. So number two, the next thing that Apple could learn from is the battery details. Yes, Android provides you a nice verbose output of what has used your battery. Yes, as you can see, you can get like an app by app breakdown of your battery usage. Of course, the screen has taken up the majority of the battery, as you can see here, but it, it's nice to have a really, uh, just a detailed output as to what you're using and how much battery is using. And then you can get even a breakdown on the CPU usage and things like that. Now I know Apple will never go that deep because they, they're catered to a whole different audience. But it would be nice if we had a little more details as to what was using our battery, what we can do to proactively preserve our battery. If we knew what was using it, we'd be able to be in a better control over how much battery we use, I, I believe. What do you guys think? Now, the next thing that I really appreciate is uh, offline dictation. This is great. I'm not online now. Hello, this is Jeff. Let's face it, you're not always online with your iPad unless you happen to have an LTE version, of course, but you know, not everybody has an LTE iPad and frankly, not everyone always has a signal. So it would be nice if you could use your dictation offline. And not only that, it will be more responsive. It will be faster. I think dictation works really well on Android. Next up, we have, yes, recently used apps. Now, obviously Apple has, you double press the home button, you get a, a little list of your recently used apps, but this is much nicer. To be able to really see each app, get a screenshot of the current state of that app, it's really nice. And to be able to just tap it and then open it up like that. I mean, the iPhone and the iPad interface is okay, but it's kind of long in the tooth. You can remove the list like that, by the way, just tap and hold. So I really appreciate the uh, recently used list option on Android. Next up, we have apps. Now, there's no question, the iPad blows Android away in the app department. I don't think there, anyone realistically would question that, but they do have one killer app or apps, should I say, on their side, and that is the Google Suite. Having things like Gmail, having things like um, YouTube, all these native functioning apps, uh, Chrome, these are all better by far on Android, and you would expect them to be, but it's it's just so incredibly convenient to have like all your email from Gmail, because who uses anything else but Gmail, honestly? I mean, no one uses iCloud email. No one uses uh, .me or whatever. This That's ridiculous. So re really, Apple should just continue to work on improving like their mail app, improving the calendars, um, working on FaceTime, make it so I don't desire to use Google apps like Gmail and Google Reader and things of that nature. See, that's the reason why Android is so attractive is because if you're in the Google ecosystem, it's really, really attractive. I mean, you just want to use it because everything's there that you already use. You know it's going to work. You know it's going to be the best flavor of that particular app. So I think Apple could learn those five things from Google. What do you guys think they could learn? Do you think this list is ridiculous? Well, just let me know what you think in the comment section. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.